I've seen a lot of people try to automate tests, and a lot of times the test gets、uh, test automation project gets abandoned, and I feel very sad about it. And the reason for why the test automation projects get abandoned is、uh, not because the team is not disciplined; it's because the team is resource constrained. And the QA or whoever's doing testing is not able to justify the value of testing. So the reason why I'm giving this talk is to help you、uh, prioritize your tests based on how much value your test would give. So that's、uh, why we are here today. So let's start with the first question of why people keep asking me where should I start, and there's a lot of ways.、Um, Uh, to start testing,、uh, a lot of people get a lot of teams get stuck here、uh, discussing: Should we? What is the shortest path to 100% test coverage? Should we、uh, start from here? Should we start from there? Should we use this tool? Should we use that tool? Should we use this technique? Should we start from backend? Should we start from frontend? And so on and so forth. So, so this conversation is very familiar with、uh, for to me. Like,、uh, and for me,、uh, in my experience, this is what the conversation often looks like. So, in in fact.、Um, A lot of the times,、uh, people look at the testing period, and for me, what the testing period me,、uh, means is mostly a description of what the structure of most test pro pro project、uh, look like.、Uh, you have a lot of small unit tests because they are small and light.、Uh, they test、uh, your components, and you have、uh, a few. Uh, UI or integration tests just to、um, test、uh, across the the system,、uh, which also tests the components. But more importantly, you have a few of them just which will cover、uh, across your system. So this is for me. I I I have a very simple、uh, interpretation of the test pyramid. But a lot of the mistake that a lot of team do is they look they look at the test pyramid and they think is a guide. To how to do testing, so it should like like、uh, you're supposed to climb climb up the pyramid, like start from the bottom, from the simplest、uh, unit test, and then、uh, once you have、uh, only write your or、uh, integration test as you need. But this is one school of thought, this is one camp, and I see a lot of teams、uh, debating about this. Like so, this is one of the debates that I had in one of my previous company. We should start from unit tests. For our backend first, because it's faster to write, and we can get coverage of our core functionality across the system quickly.、Uh, sorry, by the way,、uh, is my slides updating actually? Okay, so so a lot of teams get stuck here. They、uh, wonder.、Uh, they they some some of them would say, oh, we should start from unit tests first because it's faster and lighter to create. Some of them would say, oh, no, no, we should start from、uh, UI tests because or integration tests because we can just write a few of them. But they will cover a broad broad stripe, and whatever the unit tests will cover, the integration tests will also cover, and and more. And and the thing is, both camps are right. So that's that's the reason why a lot of teams get stuck in this、uh, debate. And the the problem is, they would get get into this、uh, analysis paralysis, and nothing nothing actually happens. So so for a few months, and this actually happens a lot.、Uh, it it happened in my old company, like. The the senior developers had a debate, and in the end, nothing came out. We 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 made no decision, and nothing、uh, happened. So, and the reason why people get stuck in this conversation is because、um, is because the is the wrong conversation to has have right now. So, what you're trying to talk about unit tests versus integration tests is talking is is you're trying to figure out how to test, but the problem is. Is that putting the cart before the horse? You're trying to figure out how to test before you figure know what to test. So what you should actually be talking about and how we should reframe the question of where should I start is not how to test but what to test. So let's、uh, take a look at how do we figure out what to test and we should. What 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 we want to how we want to figure out what to test is to use priorities and we should prioritize、uh, how we want to test、uh, what what features we want to test first. So and the reason why we want to do this is for two reasons. One, we want to be able to、uh, make sure that whatever we do in test automation delivers、uh, value as quickly as possible.、Um, that's because I don't want to see、uh, test automation projects get cancelled. So I always want the 
QA team or um, the developers who are writing the test, if it's the developers, to be able to communicate to management, um, this is why testing is redundant and we should allocate resources to testing. And the second reason is that once you have a priority levels set on all your different features, you're able to categorize your tests so that uh, into tiers of level of monitoring and level of attention that you need to give to each tier. So what we want to have at the end of the day is something that looks like this. So we have a disaster manage, uh, disaster scale system and we sorry. want to have, sorry? Sorry to interrupt uh, your camera off again. So oh, okay. Back. Let me come back to my camera, turn it on. There you go. Do you see yes. me now? Yes. Okay, good. So we want to have a, a, a like a, a category. We want to tier our tests into this group so that we know that uh, the most important test gets the most monitoring done and the most um, attention if any failures happen within this tier itself. So. A lot of teams, uh, when once I reframe this question from how to test to what to test, a lot of teams quickly have an intuition from for uh, what features they want to test first. And for me, my rule of time uh, is to start with your scariest feature. And the reason why I say this is because you probably have a very good reason why you think that feature is scary. And for me, the reason uh, how I prioritize things is based on <laughs> How much shit do I get into if this um, component doesn't work? So I have a scareometer. Uh, it's a very, very simple uh, framework. It's just four questions that I will pose for each of the um, components that I want to test. So the first one is, um, what is the business impact of this component if it fails? How frequently is the component used? How complex is the component and how uh, much domain expertise do you need to understand uh, how this component works, whether or not you want to develop it or whether or not you want to test it. So we're going to rate this on a scale of one to five and use this for categorizing our test later. So let's go through each of the um, questions. It's very simple. So first, uh, business impact. Uh, how much does a failure would impact the business operation and revenue um, if a failure occurs? So if very little impact. For example, if uh, if our email customer feature broke, uh, it's just going to annoy people. Uh, it's just a little bit inconvenient, but uh, we're just going to give it a score of one. But let's say the checkout feature failed, we're going to call it a high impact because we're going to lose customers and we're going to lose revenue. And usually I would um, seek my project product managers or business stakeholders to uh, ask them to quickly list down to me like what are the 10 most important uh, features that you want to make sure um, there are no failures that are happening there. Okay, so frequency of use is pretty obvious. Uh, this is uh, related to business impact itself. So the more often your uh, users use these features, uh, of course, they, if it fails, then the more complaints your customer support team will get. So um, I would usually recommend uh, using analytics if you have it to get a more objective data about the frequency of use because usually uh, what you think uh, users are or how you think your users are using the product is not usually what you imagine or design it for. Us users would use it in ways that you didn't think of. So try to get analytics if you have. Now, Complexity. So complexity is um, measured by how many logical paths there is through a software. Um, for us, in uh, for us testers, we usually call this uh, test cases. So usually, the programmers they like to call this psychomatic complexity. If it's really straightforward, you can explain it to a five-year-old. Uh, we just give it a score of one. If you need a little bit of knowledge to under um, to figure out how to um, test this feature for some, maybe it's like as complex as assembling a subway sandwich, then we give it a score of three. If it's really, really complex, then there's a very good chance that if you get a new developer to add a new feature to this component, you're gonna, the, is, the, the developer is gonna introduce a new bug because it's such a complex um, uh, flow. I mean, there's a lot of if and else, uh, there's more loops, a lot of cases. And uh, usually what I like to do is I like to go around asking developer, which code are you most afraid of touching? And uh, just get a list of 10, 10 uh, answers and that's usually a good place for you to start writing your test for. And then the third one, uh, the last one is domain expertise. So usually people overlook this. 
uh, domain expertise is um, do you need to get a specialist to um, explain to you how or to understand uh, the requirements of this component itself. So the reason why I ask this is because we want to make sure that if the original developers uh, who worked on these components are no longer around, there are automated tests so that if someone new comes on board to uh, maintain a feature or add new functionality, it's not going to um, ex um, screw up and introduce new bug. So you can give it a score of one if uh, it's very simple to understand, like anyone can understand how this uh, software works. Uh, give it a score of three if you need to know a little bit about the industry, like for example, accounting software, you might need to know like what is accrual, what is credit, what is debit, and, and so on and so forth. Um, if you need an industry specialist, like for CAD software, you might need to get um, the uh, civil engineer sitting beside you to explain to you, okay, this is how I think the, the software should work. Then uh, you can give it a, a rating of five. So this is our four questions. So, and to put it in business terms, this is what it would mean to the business. Um, the first first two questions, business impact and frequency is just how much would a failure cost to the business? The complexity of the component would uh, is more of like how likely would the component fail if uh, we get a new programmer to make some changes to it. If it's very complex, there's a good chance that there's a new failure. Domain expertise is somewhat similar. Uh, if it, it might be very expensive to always have to get uh, your invite your civil engineer to sit down with you for UAT to make sure that the component is working. So you want to automate that. And what we want to do now is to put our test into uh, uh into tiers. So what I usually do is to add all of, the, all of this up, and I, I try to keep it simple. I, I just have three different tiers. So sanity smoke test suit, uh, create a uh, critical test suit, and full test suit. So sanity smoke test suit, I will monitor daily. I will also automate this first. The critical test suit, I will automate. Uh, I will run it every release, and a full test suit. I will just run it for major releases where, um, because it's a really, really uh, long running test. It might take a couple, like it might take a full day to complete our full automation test suite. So you might just only test this for, uh, not for uh, like hot fixes, but we just want to test this for major releases. And we keep that on a like less frequent monitoring schedule, like weekly, for example. So now we're going to try a very short exercise. Okay, so let's imagine we have a transaction management system for a real estate agent. And we're going to take a look at a few components of this system and try to give them a score. So first, we have login as an agent. Then we're going to try to add a property to, uh, to the, our listings. We are going to try to create a transaction as a sales uh, person and create a lease agreement as well. We are going to uh, generate the invoice PDF and we're going to email it and we're going to calculate how much the agent receives every month for his commission. So let's take a look at login as an agent. So if the login feature fails, uh, how much is the business impact? I'll give it a five because if the agent cannot log in, the system is completely useless. And I'll give frequency a five because the log use agent is going to do that, do this quite uh, often. But it's not a very complex feature and it doesn't require a lot of domain expertise to figure this out. So overall, this is a score of 12. Now let's take a look at the next, um, feature, uh, add a property listing. So uh, if an agent is not able to add a listing today, um, it might annoy him a little bit. It might uh, uh, like slow down his sales progress, Like, uh, but he could do it tomorrow and that might not be such a, uh, if he speaks, it might not be such a big impact. He might add a new listing once or twice a week. It's not, uh, it's a somewhat complex feature to, to test because, or, or to build because you need to test the number of beds, number of uh, bathrooms. If it's rental, does the property allow uh, pets on the property? So there might be a lot of knobs for you to test. Um, but it doesn't require a lot of domain expertise to test this feature or to, um, um, develop this feature. So I give it the overall is a score of 10. Now let's go to the third one. So, here, um, creating a transaction. So I would give this a five because if there's a one day delay, uh, the agent might lose his sale. He might do this uh, cre transaction creation once or twice a week or maybe three times a week. It's um, fairly complex because the uh, agent would need to under, um, there might be stamp duty or tax or um, inheritance, um, uh, um, some uh, transaction or line items based on what kind of transaction it is. You might uh, need to know a little bit of domain expertise just to understand the local regulations to be able to develop and test this feature. Okay, so 
Now, generating invoice PDF, I would say that it's pretty important. Um, uh, you do it as often as you do a, the transaction. It's somewhat complex. It doesn't require a lot of expertise overall. The team. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry to cut. We are running out of time now, actually. Okay, so I'm going to uh, um, get uh, skip to the towards the end then. Yeah. So let me just um, skip through the last few features that we have. So. So we have uh, rated all of our features over here. So what I would do is I would then put them into our different tiers. So this is what the features I'll put into the smoke and sanity test based on how many points I give. And our, in our critical test, we will have uh, the, the added property listing, uh, calculate monthly sales commission. And our full test, we just have the email invoice because it's not that critical if it uh, fails. We just test it once a week. So this is um, this is how we'll start. We'll start uh, automating tests from our sanity test suit, uh, then to the critical test suit, then to the full test suit. And after that, once you have figured out what you want to test, it's actually pretty easy to figure out uh, how you want to test. If you look at login, uh, maybe some teams would want to go for it, uh, go at, go at it from a log API perspective or from a UI testing point of view. But for calculating the the commissions, for example. Uh, unit testing might make more sense. So it's actually pretty easy to figure out how you want to test each component when you figure out what, what you want to test. Okay, so anyway, this is just a, um, a guideline. So, and you can change it according to what your company uh, or your team needs. So you can add more questions, like how much time does it take type to test? Uh, you can change the weights. You can use a different scale. So maybe you just want to use a yes or no scale, or maybe you want to add like a, a ABCD with an S class for extreme difficulty. Um, or you might, might want to add more tiers, for example. Um, but my rule of thumb as well is just don't, don't make it too complicated. It should be something, a framework should be light enough for you to quickly decide. And last thing uh, I want to say uh, as well is it will always seem very scary and overwhelming when you have a very big project and to start with, but focus on one thing at a time, focus on one feature at a time. And if you focus on the thing that is most scary to start with, it actually gets very easy later on. So that's, that's all. Thank you. And uh, is there any questions? Yeah, thank you so much, Lee. Um, we are actually under the, uh, we are sitting in between people coffee break. So people will be wanting to have the coffee. Uh, but meanwhile, people still hanging around with us, uh, having the, sipping the coffee on the chairs, and they like to listen to the questions answer. But maybe we can take uh, one or two questions. So mm -hmm. I'll read that to you. So there's a question uh, from Kartike about how to find feasibility of any application test cases where we can achieve 100% automation. So I usually will actually say that um, it is very difficult to achieve 100% uh, um, uh, automation. And in fact, I will actually would ask the team, like, which uh, features do you have stable and un uh, uh, which features are not yet stable and uh, prioritize the automation of stable features first because if it's, you have unstable features, you're going to spend a lot of time um, going back and forth with the marketing team, with the, the uh, design team on picking um, the test according to well, the how the design changes. So I would say um, um, try not to get too fixated on 100% test automation. And I think... Um, prioritize or think about, uh, I think the, the key question or the key objective for your test automation would be, what is the highest value I can give to the, the company? Yeah, that helps the answer. Uh, next, next question is, how to decide priority between manual and automated tests during short release cycles? Well, if you have very short release cycle, sometimes it can be helped to uh, do manual testing because frankly, there are times when uh, writing the automated test just takes longer than doing the automation, uh, manual testing. But if it's going to not, uh, if doing this is not going to just be a one-off uh, manual testing thing, but if it's going to happen like every week, uh, it's going to, all this manual testing time is going to add up. And I would strongly suggest um, negotiating with your manager 
to give you more time, uh, like just give you two weeks to sit down and automate this thing so that you can save more time in the future. So you should have to try to convince your, your management to invest in time to uh, allocate you time to sit down and do the automation rather than uh, forcing you to stick to a schedule. Yeah. So yeah, that's the that's where we'll end now. And thanks a lot, Ray. I just truly could relate with your slides um, <laughs> from how to start to actually what to start with. And that's something amazing. I loved, loved your talk. And, and I'm sure... Um, uh, I have personal uh, questions with you. Maybe I should also go to the VIP section now. So for all, uh, she will be available in the VIP section. You can uh, search her name and hit enter and we will be all be meeting with her again. And this stage will be occupied for the next speaker now. So and also um, uh, this talk was uh, uh, brought to us by uh, Gage. So we would like to thank, thank them to sponsoring us. And um, you can also go to the launch section and meet uh, other people, talk to them and learn more from there. So thanks a lot for all joining in. And, and before going, do not uh, hit the polls. Uh, give the polls uh, to us so that we can uh, improve upon our sessions. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Pooja. Thank you, everyone.